Welcome to KB Time. I'm your host, Kabir. With me, as always, is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Radical. Uh, what do you think of these new mics, this whole setup? It's, I, I don't know. You don't Fine. feel? Because, right, I do this a lot now. Yeah. And you're doing that. This is driving Meg nuts. It's nice to have the, close. the I don't have to think about it with a lavalier, but. But this is good, too, because we look like we're at Congress. We're yeah. at a congressional hearing. We don't have to worry about clipping asking. anything anywhere or wearing. Well, at Mr. least for Chairman, me. like that, <laughs> one of those deals. Yeah. yeah, for you, where and, would we clip it? Yeah, I mean, and I wore then, a dress with a belt this time, so I could clip it on. Oh, I'm sorry, but you didn't know we were doing this? No, you didn't tell me. Gerbs is always like, eh, where should where? we <laughs> Like that. So now this has alleviated that problem. Yes, yeah, yeah. he doesn't worry about it. Anyhow, our guest tonight owns and runs, actually, I guess I should say owns and uh, pedals bicycles, <laughs> right? And we subtitle this, that's, that'll be funnier. <laughs> he owns and pedals bicycles at All Around Cyclery here in Hudson. Please welcome Brent Ford. Thanks for being here. I don't really know. You look, you look exactly like one would picture a cool bicycle shop guy to it's look the, like. It's the beard. It's the beard. <laughs> it's the shirt with the cool logo. It's all of that stuff. You've got the shorts. It was planned. Love it. Well, that's, <laughs> that makes sense. My stylist put it together. Okay. Well, your style. I think I know who your stylist is, and she always does an excellent job. So uh, tell me, first of all, how long has the shop been there? About a year? Two a years? year and a half. Okay. Uh, we opened in January of 2015. Okay. And that's prime bicycle riding weather <laughs> in January in Ohio. Uh, the past two winters, it actually hasn't been that bad. Yeah, so. I was going to say. And you do it all the time. You mm -hmm. ride your bike, even if the rest of us be like, oh, I can't do it. But you're out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me. When you want to get a bicycle, first of all, you folks sell how many different types and brands of bicycles? Uh, we sell, uh, our main brand is Norco. It's a Canadian brand. Mm -hmm. A lot of people haven't heard of it, but, you know, it's been around since the mid-60s. So wow. um, Norco is the main brand. Uh, Linus, those are the colorful, fendered mm. um, steel bikes. Okay. Um, and we just picked up Ibis, which is a higher-end carbon fiber mountain bike company. Oh, wow. And um, Niner, which does more leans towards the off-road mm -hmm. aspect of it, mm -hmm. um, but they have uh, they have some like all-arounder bikes, I guess I would say that you can ride on the road and off-road. But pretty interesting. And yeah. so the ones, first of all, Lioness, those sort of look retroy. Yeah. Right? So those are kind of based off of like French and English mm -hmm. old-school bikes, like if you know. If you were going to Amsterdam, okay. they're not as overbuilt and heavy duty as the ones in Amsterdam, but they have that kind of look to them. And they don't they don't have speeds, do they? Or yeah, the they one do. actually our best selling bike out of all the bikes that I sell yeah. is the Linus Duchy, which is a three speed. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so little maintenance, you know, right. that keep the chain tight, keep air in the tires, and keep mm -hmm. the chain lubed, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Now we've talked before about, like I mentioned, the bad weather yeah. or different weather, commuting on a bicycle mm -hmm. uh, in various types of weather. I don't know if that's the kind of bike that would be useful for that, but yeah. you do have others that will. Yeah, that will. I mean that bike would be good. Like if it's just like raining, mm -hmm. nobody wants to be out in the rain. No, you know, so a lot of people won't ride in the rain. Mm -hmm. um, being out in the rain riding is not fun, mm -hmm. but if you're out there riding already, it starts to rain. It's not that bad. No, you know, it's hot like this out. It's not that bad either. Sure, but. Um, yeah, so other bikes you would use, you know, we have the fat bikes, mm -hmm. um, and if you're familiar with those, the, they have like a four-inch wide tire. They were originally designed to ride the Iditarod oh, wow. race, and then years ago, uh, Surly's, uh, kind of a company based out of Minnesota, kind of brought them to the mass market, and mm -hmm. people looked at them weird for years and years, and it seems like the past like four or five years, they just exploded, so they're everywhere. And they've tweaked them now. They used to be more of like a, a touring geometry. Now they're more like an actual, just another mountain bike platform now. Okay. But, you know, like a lot of guys will, uh, and girls, will commute on those. Um, but again, with the, be the past two winters being so mild, you know, the, those, those have kind of, those aren't as popular now, but... Um, so, Interesting. And yeah. Hudson has, and Northeast Ohio, there's yeah. the towpath trail and all this. Yeah. So it's a lot more connected than it would have been, say, when we were growing up. Oh, right? yeah, For definitely. Bicycle. I mean, I remember riding the towpath in 1994 when I first mm -hmm. got my first mountain bike. And um, Botsam Trailhead, or used to be called Indian Mountain then, was yeah. the end. That's yeah. where it stopped. Wow. 
So we would drive, we'd park there and we'd ride up to the Winking Lizard and hmm. I'd eat wings and have a soda because I was only 19 at the time. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I mean, it's, and it's come such a long way and there's, yeah. there was parts of it, you know, sporadic throughout the, the state, but now it's, you know, you can ride from basically downtown Cleveland. I mean, you can connect it all the way to Cincinnati, sure, but you can ride solid trail except for a little patch in Maslin, which may be connected now. I haven't been down there, mm. but all the way down to New Philadelphia. So pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as far as uh, uh, bicycling technology, what are you seeing on the bikes that you sell now that maybe wouldn't have been available in 1994 that's really going to aid you if you want to be on trails or even commuting? Um, I think the biggest technology is probably, well, I mean, you see a lot more carbon fiber bikes now. Sure. Back then they were glued together. There's mm. basically carbon fiber tubes with mm -hmm. metal lugs and they would glue them together. Wow. Now that they have the technology down, so... I mean, you're getting the carbon fiber bikes down into the like, you know, mid thousand dollar range, which wow. was unheard of back then. I mean, they Absolutely. were all like multiple thousand dollar bikes. Right, right. And you, I mean, I'm not sure where you got your that bike you mentioned in 1994, but growing up for me, it was you went to a, a department store right. or anything, and the stuff they have is not the same as what you're selling. No, and you know, honestly, you know, back then too. I mean, even the bikes at department stores were better than they are now. Oh, okay. You know, um, I remember my we went to Kmart in mm -hmm. Wadsworth and my dad bought me a Huffy Track 1000 and wow. you know a lot of my memories were made on that bike sure. because that's you know what you had mm -hmm. and uh that funny my five-year-old just learned to ride without training wheels oh, wow. when my 10-year-old learned he didn't have that sense of oh my gosh I can just take off I have freedom <laughs> yeah <laughs> I she had it immediately wow so <laughs> I mean, she just rides out in the middle. Actually, you yeah. were you saw her when she rode out in the middle of the street the other day. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it's you know, everybody has those memories, and, mm -hmm. and at that time, you know, it was a bike from a department store, yeah. and you know, and they did have higher end bikes at the time. But you know, I, and there was a bike shop in our local town, and mm -hmm. but, you know, those bikes, you know, they are expensive. Yeah. But. You know, that bike lasted me probably about two summers before I destroyed it. Hmm. Wow. So a lot of memories in two years, but True. eventually it was, you know, and to fix that bike, you know, anything that's like a department store bike, you know, you buy a bike for 90 bucks, 79 mm -hmm. 99 or 89 99 you know, you back it over with the car. Right. You know, the back wheel for it's going to be, you know, 40 or 50 Half bucks. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they're just throwaways. True. I mean, and it's it's sad that you know we've come to that that you just could just throw that away but that's what it is true, true. so if you buy a better bike you're actually saving the planet because you're not throwing it away that's a good point now you've got one here i think that you're going to demonstrate yeah as a better bike yeah so, so we can bring that over here yeah sorry and so, this it says surly on it yeah so um this is one of my favorite brands um mainly mostly because i'm a tinkerer and uh, you can do a lot of stuff with this this style of bike and this is that's kind of their motto mm -hmm. they uh you know they make bikes that you can carry a lot of stuff on um so you know using it as a the, so this one was like a cyclocross bike so it when you originally was designed it had drop down handlebars um but they wanted to bring something to the market that was a little bit more affordable right and it's carbon fiber looks like no no it's not, it's not? This what is, is it? this is steel pause for editing <laughs> <laughs> so this bike is steel mm-hmm so steel bikes have kind of come and gone out of fashion. This is what they all used to be made of. Mm -hmm. um, you had a, a cycling boom back in the 70s and 80s, and everybody and, and their brother was making bikes, and they were just made with you know, all the bikes that people are think are a lot of worth a lot of money. Sure. Um, were just made out of whatever steel tube they could because they were making mm. so many bikes at the time. Wow. Um, and then you know through the 90s when I started riding. Uh, I think I'm kind of stuck on the steel bikes because that's what I rode in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and so all the tooling at all the factories was was basically made for steel bikes. Mm, interesting. So back then a premium bike was an aluminum bike. Mm -hmm. So now all the lower end bikes are all aluminum, so it's all flip now. So now oh, wow. the steel bikes cost a little bit more than mm -hmm. the aluminum ones did. Mm -hmm back then so um and it's just it's just a phase that's just how it goes like like disc brakes disc brakes on bikes 
if you were to ask me 10 years ago, I don't think that you would still have rim brakes on bikes today, but hmm. they still do them. I mean, yeah. even the road, road bikes have disc brakes, but they still offer, you know, you can still get them with a rim brake. Right. Um, so it's just preference too. So. And something like this, it's a mountain bike and you could ride this on trails. You could ride this to so work if you felt like So this is kind it. of a unique animal because it is actually a road type bike. Uh -huh. um, it was designed around a 700 C wheel, which people will also say 27 inch. Mm -hmm. It's like a metric 27 inch. Um, but it allows you to run really big tires. Their motto is fatties fit fine. So, fatties fit fine. <laughs> um, so you can put really wide tires on it. Um, mm -hmm. And what that does is just makes the ride more comfortable because you can run lower pressure. And sure. In Northeast Ohio, the roads are horrible. So, mm -hmm. you know, cushier is better. Of course. Um, yeah, but this kind of bike can kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, with all the new mountain bike trails they're building in the Cuyahoga Valley, I, this wouldn't be the ideal bike, mm -hmm. but I've ridden my bike like this on the trails and, and my friends do also. Um, but it's not something you go out there and do every day. No. You know? Um, so, um, but yeah, so this kind of is designed to be more of a commuter bike. So it comes mm -hmm. with a rack. You can okay. put fenders on it. You can put skinnier tires. You can put fatter tires. Uh, you can put drop handlebars on it. You can put flat handlebars on it. And you can do all that at your shop. I can do all you that bring at the shop. Yeah. So, I can put that so um, again, I keep bringing up the 90s just because it was such a big time in this area because the mm -hmm. towpath was getting big. Um, at that time, I worked down in the valley. Hmm. And, uh, you know, everybody wanted mountain bikes. Right. And... You know, I'm just riding the towpath. I want a mountain bike. Mm. Everybody had to have mountain bikes. Mm. So then what happened in the years after that, we were putting smooth tires on all those mountain bikes because people realized mm. the big chunky knobbies were not getting them where they needed to go as fast as they wanted to go. Ah. So Interesting. And yeah. something like this is, it's, it would last a while, unlike the ones that you were mentioning that might only go for two summers. This might last you a good good. Yeah, years. so a lot of, uh, you know, the biggest thing, the biggest difference between, well, there's a lot of differences between department store bikes and bike shop bikes. Mm -hmm. One of them being um, who assembles the bike. Okay. You know, I, we, it's, you always see it, fork on backwards, uh, brakes barely work. Hmm. And it's, you know, someone's mopping the floor and they're like, hey, we need some more bikes huh. out there. Can you go throw them together? Yeah. And they don't know, no. you know. Mm -hmm. And... You know, there's a big push right now for um, bike shop employees to do training. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they compare it a lot to the automotive industry. Um, you know, like when you go take your car, if you walk out with a five or six hundred dollar bill for repairs on your car, you really don't think twice about it because sure. that's just how much stuff costs. Sure. Um, and that's how they're trying to get the the bicycle industry is starting to try to push that. Um, okay. So. But um, anyways, so back to what we were talking about, the, what makes it different. So mm -hmm. then, you know, the, the components on these, um, this one uses a different company. This one uses Saran parts. Mm -hmm. um, we always make a joke that the bigger the Shimano sticker on the bike <laughs> is, the cheaper the bike is. Yeah. Because that's a keyword. People know Shimano right. makes cycling components. Mm -hmm. So on a lot of the department store bikes, they'll put a big, you know, Shimano equipped mm -hmm. and... It is Shimano equipped, but there's different grades of that also. Of course, yeah. Um, so bike shop quality bikes tend to have more cast aluminum and machined aluminum parts on it because it's stiffer and it holds its um, adjustment better. Sure. Where a lot of the department store bikes are stamped steel. And, you know, if you take a, you know, like a, I'm trying to think of something steel, like a, like a coat hanger. Okay. You can bend it back and forth pretty easy. Right. But once you bend it and bend it back, mm -hmm. it's got that little crick in it. Well, on aluminum that would be the same thickness, it's not going to do that. What it's going to do, it's going to break. Ah, but okay. it's going to take a lot more force mm -hmm. to do that. Gotcha. So, you know, it, it, it holds its adjustment a lot better. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the seat, the seat that's on there is mm -hmm. vastly different from what I remember seats looking like when, <laughs> right. when I was growing up. So what about the materials there? Because it feels like that's one of the big components to making your ride comfortable. It is. And the, 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 the misconception is... I'm going to get a bike and I'm going to get the biggest seat I possibly can. <laughs> so people will say, I want a cruiser seat. Right. Well, when you look at the ergonomics of your body and the way you sit on the bike is a, doesn't always necessarily 
make it more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest part about it is uh, the way the seat supports you. Um, and I've been doing this for so long, I know that I like a seat like that seat to me, even mm -hmm. though it's teeny tiny. Right. That's the exact same seat I ride on my bikes because it's mm -hmm. very flat. Mm -hmm. They make them rounded. They make leather saddles. They make, you know, and everybody's different. Right. So, you know, seat's a very personal item. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I get a lot of, oh, you know, I went out for a 20-mile bike ride today. First time I've been out all year and mm -hmm. my seat, my butt's killing me. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because you're not, you have to, there is a slight amount of conditioning that you right. have to do. Sure. So like, right. um, but yeah, so you don't really, they make women and men specific seats. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really the width of the back because like, you know, your sits bones are, you know, this far apart, sure. closer, you know, a couple millimeters within, mm -hmm. um, men and women, right. um, women being a little bit wider because, you know. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Babies and things. Kids. You're so nice Babies looking. Babies and things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, so when you get a seat that this wide, mm -hmm. you're really only touching this much of it still. Right. So the rest of it's just getting in the way. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, you know, and then like, there'll be seats that are made for bikes that you sit more upright on. Right. There's bikes that you, when, the seats that you're made for when you're leaning forward. Mm -hmm. So if you look at like Tour de France racers, you know, they all have these little teeny tiny seats sure, on. Sure. But they're ready. They also it. ride thousands and thousands of miles a year. Of course, of course. Now, when someone brings in their bicycle, an older one that mm -hmm. they already own, and they say, you know, oh, I just want to ride this again. Can you put on a new seat or whatever? How often do you look at it and say, you know what? You might just be better off with a new bike. Check out one of these. And I'm not asking you this from a salesman no, standpoint. No, no. So this is this is my, my dilemma is yeah. that I like to fix bikes. Okay. So, you know, you have a bike that you bought. 15 years ago that was mm -hmm. a $500 bike. Right. It was a good bike then. Mm -hmm. You put a couple hundred bucks into it and you have a good bike again. Sure. Okay. So I like to sell bikes to people like, you know, but I also like to repair the bikes and I don't want to, you know, just say, Hey, your bike's a piece of junk. You need a new one. Right. Right. I guess what I'm getting at more. But if you have a $90 yeah. bike and it needs $300 worth of work, that's no good. You still have a $90 bike yeah. that needs $300 worth of work. Exactly. So that's, I guess what I'm getting at is there, there must be uh, like the biggest misconceptions about the bike that you have. And my, one of them might be, Oh, I need this kind of seat, a cruiser seat or whatever. Right. But what are some other things, mistakes people are making that you can help them not to make? Um, the biggest number one, thing that people don't do is they don't put enough air in their tires hmm. um they need you need a pressure gauge mm -hmm. uh there's a little thing on the side of the tire it says this range if you're a smaller rider you might lean more towards the lower number mm -hmm. if you're a bigger guy or girl you might want to lean towards the higher end one sure. um i went through probably 35 or 40 tubes last week and i would say half or more of those were all because people didn't have enough air pressure in the tires wow yeah so it's it's called a pinch flat is what you sure. get it's when you hit a curb mm -hmm. and the tire actually compresses and it pinches the tube between the tire casing and the rim mm. and that's more than 50 percent of all flats that i deal with wow. so, and it's been this that way for i mean for the for 20 years that i've been doing this yeah. it's the same so just like cars you gotta the right tire yeah. pressure is very important for the ride and for the right. vehicle. Another misconception is you come in, you buy a $5,000 bike. Mm -hmm. People, Some people think you don't need to do anything to that bike. Oh, okay. So, and that, that's always been a really the funny one because like, oh yeah, I bought this bike, you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, it needs six or $700 worth of work. Your, you know, chain's worn out, your cassette's worn out, you need new tires. Mm -hmm. Well, I paid $5,000 for this bike. I'm like, yeah, but you haven't done anything to it in 10 years. <laughs> it's maintained, yeah. right? Breaks, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. Those so, I mean, realistically, I mean, there's there's a lot of people, a lot of the Hudson Velo guys have bikes that are like Bill Curran, the old mayor. Mm -hmm. He's right. got a bike that's, I would say it's probably 10 to 15 years old, maybe more. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it's in really good working shape because, you know, he kept up with the maintenance on it. Right. And, you know, the parts are getting dated, but... It's just they're just getting dated. They still work, so and they still make replacement pieces, parts for it. So right, right. Interesting. Yeah. Now I've driven by a few times uh, and seeing you out. You're like having a party in front of the store. 
Tell me what that's about. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Never <laughs> no. mind. Then. Maybe it wasn't you guys. <laughs> no, um, we had been for the summer on uh, Sunday nights. We've been doing uh, the, not Sunday nights, but the last Sunday of the month, we've been doing a little barbecue out there. Okay. So the guys that I ride with often, and we've had, it's been an open invitation, and mm-hmm. you know, we invite a bunch of people to it. So we've had probably 15 to 30 people show up to it. And, Very cool. You know, we cook. Mm-hmm. Um, next Sunday we might be smoking ribs. Okay, and uh, we've so we've done that. Hot dogs, burgers, just kind of sit out and you know. Fun times. Just to trying to bring people in and you know yeah. show that it's not all business. Exactly. And when folks drive by the place, uh, if the lights are on, you're probably in there. And they can come in and get all their questions answered. Yeah. And the only day I'm bikes. not there during the during the the year, mm-hmm. all the time is I'm not there on Wednesdays. Okay. Um, during the winter, we don't come in on Sundays. Okay. Um, ideally, it would be nice to have Sundays and Mondays off, but with my scheduling, it just, right. you know, kids and parenting and adulting. Yeah. And where is the store again? 46 Ravenna Street, uh, Unit C5, right next to Mickey, Mickey's. the the barber of Hudson. Right. And uh, there's some really good new businesses over there. Heartwood Roasters is That's really right. good. Mm-hmm. Um, the new donut shop. And... Uh, yeah, it's been great. The I've watched the evaporator works kind of fill up and empty out and fill back up again. <laughs> back so it's it's again. really good. Good so, stuff. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're there, and uh, we'll make sure that everybody stops by. Brent Four, everyone, thanks very much for being here. Thanks. Hi folks, you know there's no need to be a city duck for high prices, not when Coupler sells TVs for less. Like this 19 inch Panasonic for just $379.95, or this 25 inch Panasonic with remote control, just $698. Plus at Coupler's, you get a two year warranty on parts and labor. Don't pay high prices. See us at Coupler's and save. The quality brands at the lowest prices. Cutler TV and Appliance, Cedar at Shaw, across from Fresno State. Barberton is like the chicken capital of the world. The hot sauce is like a tomato-based rice with peppers and onions, and yeah, we use cayenne pepper here. And a lot of places use like fresh peppers. We used to, but now we just do the cayenne. And I think everything is Serbian. Something, and then the chicken, how is that different from what you would get, um, say, in the rest of the state? It's fried in lard. Mm-hmm. Most people like use oil. You know, we use lard. It started with lard and he's never changed. It's always been lard. The restaurant has been here since early 50s. Yeah, so, it's, we just celebrated our 67th year. So what yeah. do you think keeps people coming back? Um, good food, <laughs> good service, <laughs> good management. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's just a tradition in Barberton. Like all the chicken houses were basically started by, well, they all been started by Serbians and, and then handed down to their families pretty much. Do the Serbians all come here to work at a certain factory or something? No, that they, they just came, I don't know. My husband's grandma started this and she was actually with Belgrades. She was friends with them. They all came over from like Yugoslavia. They were all, I don't know, friends like, I guess, you know, and then Belgrade started and then Mary Marinkovic started this one and then Hopikin. They were Serbians also and Billy Jen, there. they start. They were serving Jeff. Yep. And it just spread from there. Yep. Pretty cool. Yeah. All right. And how has this place changed in 40 years? 40 years? Well, our cut of chicken is the only thing that's really changed. We used to do a 12 cut where we had backs and wings. Now it's an eight cut, and it's just the breast, the thigh, the leg, and whole wing. It's cut to five. He just started that two years ago, and so far so good. People are still upset about no backs. People love backs. Do you know what a back is? The long bony piece? Yeah, people love that. But they can still go to Hopkin and get that. And the same owner owns Hopkin as us now. He bought it in 1990.